So first of all, Claire, congratulations on your first anniversary at the HR booth. I don't know where this last year has gone. It just seems like five minutes ago we were chatting over Teams as well, actually, when you, you first kind of applied for, for a role with us. I know, I know. I was like, so so last minute as well, a very um, last minute change, I think. But yeah, I know it's just been, it's, it's been good. It's been really quick um, yeah. in the past year. I feel like I've just been here longer, actually. Huh. When people ask me, I, I have to think again before I actually tell them when I started. <laughs> it, does, it has flown by but in a, in a good way it feels like you've been here forever. Like I said yeah, it does. before it's, it's you've just kind of slotted in perfectly and you know managing multiple clients so it's been it's been really good actually. Okay yeah it's been I've, I've really enjoyed the past year actually it's been good. Right, so what, what have you so I suppose first of all then what, what I, I attracted you to the HR booth then so I suppose that you've obviously got loads of HR experience like what what made you kind of uh, apply to come and work for us? Um, I think it was kind of a range of things so as you know I was at um, my previous employer and um, working part-time just after having my wee boy um, and I kind of got to the stage where as much as I really enjoyed working there it was like I wasn't challenging enough it was very quiet and um, I mean, I'd already decided that as as Finley got older, that I was going to, you know, look for more hours. And um, I just, yeah, I just kind of got to a point where I was like, oh, I just need to start using my brain. So I'd yeah. actually looked at a few consultancy companies because someone who I'd worked with previously had always said, oh, do you know, if you have a kid, you might want to consider consultancy because it's quite flexible and stuff. And I always wanted to do that. I'd actually like during my maternity, I'd kind of looked into the option of doing it as well. Um, so I um so yeah, so I think the HR booth I just always known about you guys for some reason, just being in the local area and stuff, I think. And um I just kind of thought, oh well, you know, like just see what's going on and you never know, reached out to you, said I'm available. Obviously certain set of um, set of circumstances that I had, you know, if that was doable, great. If not, yeah. thanks ever so much. Um, and yeah, I just think it was the reputation. It was the the type of business that you do, um, type of work I wanted to get into as well. Um, you know, was give consultancy a try and see what it was like. Um, so I ultimately that and, you know, the sort of thought of being able to use my brain again, I think was a big driver as well for me. So, so yeah, um, but mainly because I knew of the business and um, seen a lot on LinkedIn and stuff and seen yeah. a lot of good things that were going on so that that's what probably attracted me more even though I had looked at other consultancy companies I wasn't really that bothered yeah. do you know there was there was just thing I just felt like they were too big and um I don't know like yeah I just felt like you would get sucked in and pigeonholed whereas you don't at the HR booth which is good oh, yeah so my, my recollection was that I think you put a CV into me just on spec and at that point yeah you know, I've a suitable position I think I reply back to you and acknowledge that at that point it says keep in touch and I think it was probably yeah. about five months later I maybe kind of come it back. It was quite a while later yeah it was yeah. actually aye. I remember that and I think we didn't have and it was a different role we had because we were looking to bring someone in to manage the kickstart program it was like an employability development manager yeah. and I, what had kind of kept you top of my mind a little bit was that you were liking some of the the posts on on LinkedIn anyway. <laughs> So and I think when we then looked at that position, I then took a bit of a change of tact because I reached out to you and you were you were still interested and keen to have a have a chat. So we decided to, I suppose, change direction in terms of that that role we're recruiting for and bringing in as a, as an HR consultant. So that was my recollection, and I think you it was the first time I'd ever um, offered a position to somebody without meeting you in person because we did it all along. Because we were still in lockdown at that point. At yeah. The start. I know and it was all very weird like getting getting an interview over teams and then like getting an offer and it was like wow like I've not even actually physically met these people and I've joined the company yeah. so it was yeah it was it was but it was how it had to be done eh? so you just kind of went with that I think um but yeah certainly I, it was good because I think when the, you contacted me I just never I, I was really surprised yeah. um because at that like I had been looking like during that sort of time between sending my CV and just keeping an eye out but what I'd found Ali and I discussed with you before is because I I wasn't in the position to do a nine till five. Um, as soon as employers found that out, this is obviously pre-pandemic. Um, as soon as employers found that out, they, they were just like, "No, you have to do nine till five, or we can't even." Because I was pretty much like, "Don't interview me unless," and and that was that was it, which was quite disappointing. Whereas I think it's actually taken 
a bit of a turn now given the whole COVID situation um so yeah so yeah it was and it was really like you know when I said to my friends and stuff I was like you know like HR Bush reached out to my friends like you've been headhunted I was like well <laughs> kind of but not really um, do you know so that was um but it's always good when you know someone's kept you in mind as well and I think you just want to make more of a an impression do you know when that happens so so yeah so it, it all came at very good timing I think too which was great yeah, I know. and I actually remember because I think it probably wasn't like the first question or kind of answer but I think you did say quite early on in the team's call about your circumstances with Finlay and the hours and I think it was almost like you were expecting me to be put off by that but naturally yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember that and I was kind of like yeah I'm not even needing to discuss that it was yeah, more yeah. Like, I know but Which was really nice. It was really nice because you're thinking, you know, when you're sitting there thinking, I just want to work and I want to do a job. And, you know, you've got certain situations that don't always make that fit into your whole office nine to five. Um, yeah. And I remember saying to my husband after as well, I was like, I had all these like things in my head. And I was just like, oh, yeah, he wasn't bothered. <laughs> and he was like, really? Yeah. I was like, no, I was like, it was, that was weird, you know. So, um. So, yeah, and that's what I'd always been like when I was applying. So it was really good to have an employer say, well, no, let's see what job you can do as opposed to, you know, having making sure you're in the office 9 to 5 type thing. Eh? Exactly. And actually disappointing as well, considering the roles you're applying for would be HR roles, you know. And, you yeah, know. Where, yeah. All, yeah, all high level roles as well, like, you know, from advisor to business partner to... Um, you know, it was it was quite quite a shame, but you know, pre pandemic, Alistair, as you know, you just accepted that, and you were like, all right, fair enough, you yeah. know. And then when COVID hit, I think people are less likely to to have yeah. that kind of work in, so yeah. it might be better now for people. Yeah, of course, because that's just so disappointing from a candidate perspective that businesses are missing out on so much talent if they're not prepared to change their approach to flexible working or, or whatever. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Well, well, their losses are again. So well, that's it, and it was obviously meant to be because um, you know I'm I'm absolutely chuffed to to be yeah. doing this job and and working for the HR boost. So yeah, every cloud and all that. Eh? <laughs> yeah, definitely. So you touched on there like the motivation for for applying, Claire. So as as the role kind of what you expected then, you know, what does a typical kind of day look like for 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 you? Um, I would say. Every H, every HR role, you have a certain expectation, I think, of that you're going to be dealing with certain types of cases. And um, and I think from my background, because I'm used to walking into, you know, walking into the office at the time um, and being like, oh, yeah, I'm just going to work on this today. And then suddenly getting a phone call from another site being all by the way, clear, everything's just kicked off and yeah. you're having to change it. I think, you know, you're kind of used to that. So I had an element of expectation, but I, I think I'm more expected, like, just to be answering questions over the phone right. um, and maybe doing like a wee bit of work behind it. But, um, yeah, I would say a typical day is basically we do our daily huddle, of course, as you know, and um, which is really good because you're getting a chance to see what everybody else has been up to and, you know, any challenges they have and give advice and get advice when, when you need it. Um, and then I will basically start on... I'll have goals for the day that I think, you know, if I've got a deadline for a client um, that, you know, I've, like I have to get to that deadline. Um, and then it's basically a free for all after that. So, <laughs> you, kinda, you know, you could get a phone call that turns around and they're like, oh, I've got a situation. So I'll have to, you know, what's your advice? And then, you know, the client thinking all you need to do is give them a bit of advice could then turn into, oh, there's actually paperwork behind this and or shall we get a meeting organised? And then it turns into something a lot bigger. Um, so I would say a typical day starts off with a bit of structure and yep. then can go anywhere after that. But that's what, what I enjoy and what I'm used to. Um, yep. I think I get, you know, people, I don't know if people think I'm crazy because I'm so used to working, like I was so used to working like 100 miles an hour. And then I'm one of these people that if I don't have that, I start to get a bit distracted, yeah. you know. So, and I think you crave that as well, which is, again, the motivation for kind of applying for this job as well is because um, you knew it was going to be a lot of variety yeah. um, and you were going to have to work at that pace as well, which which is something I enjoy and, you know, getting more used to. <laughs> yeah. And I suppose that's the nature of HR. You can come in in the morning with good intentions and then a client or an issue kind of comes up and you just have to react to that. So 
yeah, yeah. that's it um, which is reactionary isn't it um but yeah. I, again it's something I was always used to dealing with so when you had you know you have a day that you, you you're able to get through everything it's like all right okay what's going on it's a bit quiet and yeah um, yeah that's what I enjoy quite a lot about it, actually so I would say that's a typical day it's predictable yeah. until about half ten <laughs> Uh, that sounds that sounds a bit right. Uh, good. Uh, what what do you think your kind of most challenging part of the job is then, Claire? Um, I would say probably getting to getting to know the requirements of the client. So right. obviously based on their business. So I would say it's probably more challenging as in um, you know, you can have two different types of disciplinary is going on yeah. but because of the client and their business and their business needs you have to tailor your approach mm-hmm. differently and um, so it's making sure like just making sure that you know you're supporting their business how it needs to work so obviously we have some um, not-for-profit businesses that you know if you do something it can have a bit of a financial impact so you have to be mindful of that whereas you know other businesses suspending somebody might not be that big a deal because it's the company money but as non for not for profit it's it's you know lottery money or something yeah. that you're having to use so so yeah I think that's probably one of the biggest challenges and just making sure that you are doing the right thing for their specific business so that you know they're not at any detriment as well um, and yeah. but that's just getting to know the clients and the business and stuff and although I've been here a year I'm, I'm learning every day about that yeah and I suppose that's a good thing like we're, we're dealing with kind of manufacturing companies there's, there's charities that you've mentioned professional services but all of them have the same challenges albeit just in a different different sector absolutely yeah yeah it comes with different problems and stuff doesn't yeah. it <laughs> And what, what would you say has been your kind of biggest success or achievement in, in the last year then, Claire? Um, in terms of like client, dealing with clients and stuff like yeah, that. Dealing with clients or biggest success from being at the HR booth, so whether it's a client-related matter or anything to do with the team, anything at all. Yeah, I think um, probably biggest success is obviously the teams or one of them is the team's grown in the last wee while, the last year. So just making sure that everybody's, you know, quite integrated and um, just like trying to build relationships and stuff because we have been quite remote. So that can be a bit of a challenge, just getting to know other team members. Um, so that, that's been really good. I feel that, you know, hopefully I've, I've got to know quite a lot of them and being able to work with them on quite a good level. Um, I think maybe one of the more the biggest success is one of the things I probably feel most proudest of is um, having a client who was in the voluntary, um, you know, not for profit sector, who had quite a key issue that I wasn't familiar with before. Um, And just helping her navigate through that and deal with that along with, you know, all the potential future looking at the future implications if we were to do something different or are looking at the financial implications where we've had to implement a part of a process um, and actually get into quite a successful outcome and and getting the feedback from the client that you know she was quite happy and she felt supported and you know she was able just like to pick up the phone to me and just be like oh this is going on which I think is a massive compliment so I think that I've maybe established that with a lot of the clients actually so yeah. I would I would see that as quite an achievement as you know they maybe just picked up the phone and they don't only feel that they just have to ask you a question they feel like they can actually yeah. like have a conversation and, and tell you how they're feeling so that you you know how to then best guide them which is really nice it's that more building up that personal relationships with them which I quite enjoy. Yeah, good yeah and, and I'm definitely seeing that as well mm-hmm. with you before there's a few clients that I was kind of looking after previously and you've kind of picked that up and they don't come to me now they just go straight to you. Yeah uh, <laughs> which is a massive compliment you know Absolutely. it really is. <laughs> Um, and you know what I'm seeing as well just recently with you know changing the structure of the team like you, you kind of chaired the huddle quite a bit taking the lead on on that you've got a really good manner and good approach when, when you're doing that and that structure so I've, I've kind of seen your development come on quite a bit in the last year so it's, it's great to see you kind of grow and thrive as well in the, in the business. 
Oh, thank you. And I would I would agree with that as well, because that's it's quite a big thing for me, I think, to do that. So the more I do it, the more comfortable I get. And actually being given, you know, I feel sometimes I'm a I'm a bit like John's right hand man. Uh, and yeah. um, do you know, and I, I really like that. I do enjoy that. And I feel like, you know, we could bounce a lot of stuff off each other as well, um, yeah. in terms of the business and stuff. So so yeah, I really I've yeah, yeah, I feel like I have been given a chance to grow as well, which has been nice. Good, glad to hear it. Um, and I suppose obviously that's kind of first year kind of gone just like that. What what are you kind of looking forward to the most for for next year and beyond? I think um, I'm looking forward to getting to work with different clients again. So building the one to one relationships just with our client contacts. Yeah. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to new people coming on. Yeah. Um, you know if if that happens and just uh, being able to support new businesses and getting more exposed to the different types of sectors that we deal with as well um, and just yeah just working with the team as well like I just think we're a really good team we work really well together and just like seeing how we can all continue to develop so I think it's going to be exciting like I'm really excited for this year I've never once thought oh god you know another year at the HR booth um, yeah. I just think there's so much like so much potential um, yeah. and just so much ways that we can grow and we can support people so so yeah so I'd, hopefully hopefully we can continue to do that <laughs> well it's exciting times ahead and I, I, as I say I'm delighted I've said that to you before that you're part of the team and it's just great that you're here and you're on this journey with us as we, as we move forward to another another exciting year ahead well, thanks. And I, I do like, I really enjoy it. There's not anything, you know, you always have your tough days, don't you? Where there's so much going on and you're thinking, oh God, how am I going to get to the end of this? But um, I, yeah, I really enjoy it. And I think a lot of that comes down to the clients we work with as well and, and the team and, and the business and just using my brain, Ali. I think I've always said that to you. I just like, I really just enjoy uh -huh. problem solving and when somebody gets to the end of a process and they're like oh thanks for your help I'm like oh fab yeah. do you know they're happy so really it, it's good to do that and I think one of the things is and you again you'll know yourself like when you're integrated HR I yeah. used to get you know I used to walk into a room and people would scatter you know whereas you're actually dealing with people that want to deal with you no. um which is which is good so that's quite different I would say working working at the HR if you're like oh you actually want to speak to HR all right cool um yeah. so that that's always quite funny I think as well when I think back on that you know I could clear a room in two seconds <laughs> That's the, the, the evil HR perception, eh? Yeah. Oh, totally. Yeah, it always was. <laughs> so I, I don't know if it's something you have thought about, but what's your kind of long-term aspirations, Claire? So even just not the year ahead, but further beyond that, you got like long-term aspirations around your own career and what that maybe looks like? Yeah, I think just continuing to, um, I've never seen myself as a director. I just don't think that's that's my level. Um, but yeah, hopefully like being able to sort of work, um, progress onto full time, um, and I don't know, like just I would say like supporting John and being able to, you know, move, maybe not move fully into that type of role, but, you know, be be a sort of second hand to the business, I think, because I think even, you know, with um, myself and other members of the team moving up to managing people, I'm actually really enjoying that. And I never saw myself as like a manager of people, but I'm really enjoying it. And I'm also enjoying the fact that because we are a small team, our opinions matter. Um, so we are able to sort of have an open discussion with you about, you know, how we feel things should work or what we should be doing in the business. And I think we, we take a very joint approach for that. Yeah. Um, and I think that's somewhere where I would like to develop to as well, that, you know, you're, you're hand in hand with the decision making and yeah. stuff, which would be, you know, a lot of responsibility. But I think it would be good, especially when you see the business thriving yeah. and you see the people yeah. growing as well. Um, so, yeah, um, I've not got like say rules on that or anything, it's but fine. I think yeah. because I am enjoying um feeling like I'm supporting John quite a bit and stuff I am actually enjoying that aspect of the job and again yeah. I just never saw myself doing that before it's just I think you just have to be in the right environment for it don't you so uh, so yeah. yeah that's probably probably where I see myself going at the HR booth anyway like I'm just after uh, after my experience of being um, a standalone supporting directors I'm not entirely sure <laughs> if I would want to do that again <laughs> Uh, well, we're delighted to have you, and uh, hopefully, you know, we can help fulfil your ambitions in terms of helping you still continue to grow and thrive at yeah. HR Booth, and I'm sure, I'm sure we will. Yeah, and I want—I think one of the huge things is being able to mentor people as well. I really, really enjoy that, and especially when I see them 
develop and you know take on their own their own wee projects and stuff I think that's amazing so so yeah and there's always plenty of opportunity for us to do that here isn't there so yeah. so that's really good too but yeah no I'm really really enjoying it the the first year's been amazing um it's been it's been hard work which I enjoy in terms of hard work in a good way yeah. um and there's just been so much exposure which has been absolutely amazing so so yeah no two days are the same but yeah I'll be good and I'm really looking forward to what next year could bring as well. Good, I me too. And just once again, thanks for all your support in the past year. It's been great working with you. You've added a lot of value to, to the team, the business and to our clients and you, you're a joy to work with. So I'm looking forward Thank to seeing what the next 12 months brings and, and further ahead. Thank you. You too, Ali. It's been great. <laughs> for that, great catching up with you on, on that topic this morning. So thanks very much.